Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Friday, November 3rd, 2017. And what you are looking at are pictures of one of the pieces that I picked up at the estate sale last Friday, I think it was, a week ago today. And uh, basically what I want to talk to you guys about is what these pieces look like during the various stages of restoration. And uh, I did, just to reiterate, I picked up this Dutch oven. It was an unmarked Birmingham stove and range piece. Very good quality. Uh, you could see very little rust on it. Good bones to it. It has, has a nice bail handle and so on and so forth. And uh, then you have the lid. It's an 8G. And the bottom, it's harder to see. It doesn't appear to have any other markings other than, um, and you can't see in the picture here, I believe it was an 8R. So that's the Dutch oven. And this is what it looks like after it was stripped. So that's the lid. And you see um, just down to gunmetal gray. That's the inside of the lid. That's the telltale sign that it's an unmarked Birmingham stove and range, BSR for short. Um, this is the Dutch oven, the, the, the actual kettle part, and uh, it's stripped down. And that's what it looks like now with a lot of the rust gone. Now you still see some of the rust here uh, on the underside where the handles are. But um, And how I strip these guys, I strip them by first throwing it into a lye bath. The uh, combination is 5 gallons of water plus 16 ounces or a pound of lye crystals, 100% lye crystals, and um, you can do 10 gallons, 2 pounds of lye crystals, but whatever you do, you add the water first, and then throw your lye in. Uh, the advantage of that is you can throw, if you'd like to do a lot of skillets at one time, or you have several skillets to do, you can throw them all in there, and you can leave them in for as long as you want, because as long as cast iron is, is cold, it's not porous. And the only thing that really is porous is the surface that bonds to the imperfections in the metal, but the metal itself is not porous. Now what you're looking at here is the stripped Dutch oven it has an 8R on it, but no other markings whatsoever. So this is vintage, um, made before 1960. So it is vintage. So anyway, that's what that looks like out of the lye bath. And then I also put it into a 60-40 vinegar water combination rinse after I took it out of the lye bath and left it in there for about a day. It took off a lot of the carbon. Now, I could have left it in there longer, but at this point of the game, it really doesn't matter when you start seasoning. It'll season up nice and black. But um, you, you could leave it in there longer, but you really have to pay attention when it's in vinegar because it will start to eat the metal. Be very, very careful of that. Lye bath, you can leave it as long as you want. Very convenient. But a vinegar, you got to watch it. Okay? So moving along, this is a three-legged bean kettle uh, that was from the 19th century. And you can see all the rust in here. Uh, that was also picked up at the estate sale for 18 bucks. You can see some of the pitting, but it's a pit kettle. And making soups and beans and things of that nature, it really doesn't matter. Um, there's what it looked like before I stripped it. And there's the underside. There's the gate mark. Anytime you see a gate mark like that, you know it's 19th century. That's when they used two sides, um, two molds, and they forged it together. And that's what they did in the 19th century. But this is a good, good quality kettle, and it will bring money on eBay once it's restored. So there we have it. Now this is uh, stripped lye bath and a vinegar rinse and it's black iron as you can see here it uh, is pretty uh, you know stripped down and this is also showing um, you know stripped and one one coat of seasoning on this one I didn't season the other ones yet and you can see how nicely that that cleans up no rust it's shiny and there is another angle of it. This is after it was stripped, lightly sanded, and now with one coat of seasoning on it. That, and I'll show you that in real life in a minute here. This is the Griswold from the estate sale. That's before I stripped it and before I rinsed it in vinegar. And this is the uh, back side of it. 
This is what it looks like now, down to gunmetal gray. And it's a beautiful pan, just beautiful. And I got a lot of the carbon off, but again, I have a real busy week going, job hunting and such, that I really didn't want to leave it in there too long and risk ruining a just a rare vintage find. That's what it looks like on the uh, other side. Pretty much all the rust is gone. You have a little bit of the carbon left, but the seasonings will take care of that. Number 10 Erie, slant, large slant Griswold. So I'm going to pause this video. I'll be right back showing you what these guys look like in person. Okay, guys, I am back again. I have them lined up on the dining room table, but this is the kettle. After one coat of seasoning, once it was stripped and lightly sanded to remove any of the rust. And you can see that everything is gone. There is some pitting there, but like I said, uh, this is going to get two or three more coats of seasoning. It'll fill some of those in. And it's a three-legged bean pot. You know, it really doesn't matter. But this is very dry, the way I season it. Um, I have a video, How to Season Your Skillets from Start to Finish, and I'll link that one if you guys want to take a look at that. But yeah, this guy is in really good shape. It has a nice handle to it. And uh, it needs about three more coats. This is a Dutch oven. And this is a um, 8G. Here it is. And this is a lid. It's an unmarked BSR. Dutch oven got most of the rust off. The only time that there, the only, there's some rust here on the edges where the handle is. I'll just wire brush that away. Very smooth interior. And then the uh, you can now clearly see it has an 8R to it. Um, it's an 8 quart, I believe, 2 gallon pot. Uh, very nice and got most of the crap off the uh, bottom with the stripping process. And because it doesn't say made in USA, this one was made before 1960. So that's always good. So that is Okay, the Dutch oven. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that there. Now I still need to lightly sand that to get any rest of the rust off before I season it for the first time. And then here is the Griswold, or an Erie, number 10, 716A, and it's down to the gunmetal gray. I love this. It's a 11 and 3 quarter inches large skillet, <clears throat> but very easy to pick up with my hand, and I have a little arthritis in my right hand, so that's really nice that I can do that. Very smooth surface, no rust, and doesn't even need sanded, which is nice. I'll just probably uh, make sure just to get any imperfections off very lightly um, if I do fi find anything on there. But again, that is an excellent shape, and that's what it's going to look like after stripping in a lye bath, followed by a vinegar soak, and sc a scouring pad. <clears throat> That's what it'll look like. That's what it'll look like after one round of seasoning. So I'm going to get to work on these. I will be back with the next video once I show what it looks like after a round of seasoning, probably in the next day or two. Maybe not till early part of next week. Got lots of stuff going on, but at least wanted to give you guys something to look at. And I will be back. Again, thanks guys for watching. Have a nice weekend. Please remember to give me a thumb up if you like. Leave a comment below and go make it a great day.